Hey everyone, welcome back to another daily recap. Um, now today is my biggest losing day ever. Um, it, and on a scale if of emotions, if zero was depressed and rock bottom and 10 is feeling amazing, I would say I'm about a seven or an eight. Now, I don't know why I feel so good. I think it's just because I followed my system today and it was it, it just didn't work out. Um, so I'm negative five hour today, biggest loss ever in a day. Um, and really negative five hour isn't that much, like that should be recoverable. But again, I do struggle with having a low average gain, average R gain. So I'm really trying to pick that up. Once I do pick that up, I'll be able to recover losses a lot easier. But yeah, this one is going to take some time to recover, I think, um, unless we get more sample size for my system. So negative 4R was from the system, and that is because I got massive slippage on the last trade of the system. So I have a max cut of three cuts per ticker, which results in 3R, um, but it was 4R this time because I just had massive slippage. Um, and I'll actually show you guys the slippage. Let's see. Well, actually, yeah, I'll just let me screenshot it real quick. So, yeah, that's the slippage I got. My stop was about here, I think, somewhere around here, and I just got massive slippage. And this was on AGRI. Um, so, I took 4R loss on that. And then I have, a, I have a thing where I take 3R cuts max with my system, and then I have two more tries at it with the discretionary trade because the discretionary is like a whole other system. And in my mind, both systems are net positive over the long run. So this is a good thing to do. And so far it's been it's been working out well, but I did take a cut on AGRI. So I'll show you this. That was a high day like I showed you before. Um, so I was going for the clear out. As you can see, it kind of rejected there. I got on with a tight starter. Um, and I lost another R. So, yeah, I'm down about 5R on that ticker. And then let me pull this off screen. And then I'm down. And then, so my other trade was HYMC. Um, this one was HYMC. This one was an extension. So, wow, this thing ran a lot more than I thought. Oh, wow, it ran after hours. That's crazy. I just pulled up the chart now. So, this is, this is actually crazy. So, anyways, I was looking at these. Wow, that's crazy. Okay, I'm just now seeing this. because so I was trading this super low. So, I was looking at these resistance, le resistance levels, and I wanted to take a short into it. And I was kind of thinking macro clear out thesis, so I was looking forward to go over and then reject. Um, now I kind of failed here. So, well, I didn't really fail, but I kind of broke my rule that I had just made. And that is I cut before my stop. So, um, my original stop was 120, so I might have top ticked. But I shorted into this 111 resistance. We had some stalling. And then after we pushed and broke down, I saw a, mass, I saw a lot of soaking, so I covered out. Um, again, it could have still failed and this is probably a bad habit to cut before my stop, um, but it did go a little higher and then this was the macro clear out over 110 that I was originally thinking of and it actually had a fair retracement down to one. I wasn't expecting a huge fade on this because a lot of shorts were likely trapped in here. Um, so I was looking at one for the cover, one and then maybe hold some for view up, but as you can see, craziness. This is going to offer amazing um, opportunity tomorrow for a gap down short if it does gap down. So right now I'm actually going to make a note of it. HYMC gap down short potential. Um, now I just made a note of that. So moving on to another trade. Um, so that one I was break even on. And then Kala, I took a long today. This is a new setup I'm trying and I'm learning it from someone else. Um, so the stock has initial run up, okay? Um, now day two, usually this is when it fades off and dies. But when they hold up, that traps the shorts. And so on the third day, they 
they liquidate. So since shorts are still in this holding, um, they use this to get out liquidity. Uh, now I did really good here. You know, I got in, I got in pre-market with a stop at 110. Um, and my entry was about 120, so I was risking 10 cents, and I made one, two, so I made about 2.5 ish reward. Now the problem is, this is a new setup, so I didn't use big size. So I only got 0.3 R on this trade, because <laughs> I was risking like nothing, just because I wanted, you know, this is a brand new trade, I wanted to use small size. But of course, my winners or my losers are full size, and my winners are small size. That's how today worked out. That's how a lot of my days and trades work out. It's super annoying. I'm really trying to fix it. I just need to review my trades more and see exactly what I need to be fixing. Um, you know what? That That's what I got to do. Um, just a second ago, I was thinking, you know, oh, like, let me try to find a better system. Let me try to improve um, one of my current systems. What I need to really do is just look at my own trading and see how I can improve that. Like, that's, that's what's really happening. And, improve, and focusing on improving that and making some small changes is really going to make all the difference and not trying to find a, a better system, perhaps. Um, so that's something I'm going to do. I'm going to focus more on my own trading the rest of today. And then hopefully I'm going to explain my plans for tomorrow and beyond with this new kind of hot market and what's not working. But anyways, my, my goal was 150. I got it. Um, and I took off about half at 140 and then the rest at 150 um, and then actually I was trading this at school and I realized oh shoot I didn't cover all out um, That's because I was hoping for higher on like a home run size lotto size So I just cut that when I realized oh shoot. I still have some shares left um, But yeah, this is a good trade. I really like my exits. They were pretty pretty pinpoint exits. I would say um and then yeah, that was that was a 2.5 risk reward trade. Of course, I only got 0.3 R because I it's a new setup, so I risk small. Um, nine. This one hurts a lot. This one hurts a lot. This is where my rule um, that I mentioned before. This is where I, I I created a rule today, and so as you can see, beautiful entry. Okay, everything failed. Relative weakness to um, ENSV. Okay, this this is the energy um, basket of stocks. So ENSV was the strong one today. So I was watching that. It was holding up. I was I was scared ENSV was gonna trap, um, but nine had a good rejection as well. Well, actually ENSV had the rejection. So did nine. So I actually shorted it with a very tight stop. My stop was boom, boom, boom. My stop was 183. Okay, 183 stop entry right here. I was in full size. Okay, full size. One hour risk. So it ENSV tanked. That's why I got short um, nine, and then it kind of trapped, and I was scared. Ah, oh, like nine's gonna reclaim, and you could see it pushed. It, then it started looking weak, so I got in short. And then it had kind of like this strong bounce. I thought it was going to reclaim. I don't know. I really don't know. But ENSV was kind of trapping at this point. So I was like, okay, let me just get out. I think this is going to go. <sighs> but this was relative weakness. And I don't know. Just covering break even has not been good. And again, I heard someone say it on chat with traders that covering break even is the dumbest thing ever um, because you're really not letting your trade work ever. And if you do that, you're gonna let a lot of winners go and, you're, and it means you're not accepting the risk. And I think I did this only because of my AGRI loss this morning. Um, because I knew, man, down 4R already, like that hurts. Um, I don't wanna go into like a five, six, seven R day. That That's like pain, that's depression. Um, so I think I was scared like of making my loss worse. I really think that's the root of the problem here, um, but I should have just separated that. That was a system trade. It's okay. It's fine if I lose. Well, is it fine? I don't know. It's fine if I lose eight R in a day, so long that I'm trading quality setups. It's just that once we have a lot of setups in a single day, you your risk exposure gets a lot bigger. So once things start going against you, your risk can be your losses can be pretty big on a certain day. 
I know a lot of people that have hit max loss the last few days. Um, I mean, I'm I haven't. Uh, AGRI was max ticker loss, um, but I mean, yeah, that was all part of the system. Now this just discretionary emotional decisions are just the worst. Um, beautiful, beautiful uh, move down. I don't know what my cover target was going to be. That's another problem. I don't have things predetermined. Uh, I would assume I would go into this. Um, you can see all the support. Let me actually do this. Yeah, so you could see all the volume demand. This is kind of the bottom of the, the floor. Strong support at 410 and 4. And that was a perfect cover area. Um, I could have got probably, let's see. I was risking about, let's say 10 cents. 10, 20... 30, 40, 50. I could have got potentially, I would say it's out three to one. Let's just say at worst, I would have got three to one on this. Now that would have made my day. So this one would have made my day as well as uh, K-A-L-A if I went full size on those. So like, I don't know if I should go full size on stuff I'm trying new. I don't think so because I am more likely to lose on those. But I need to be... Just not making random decisions mid-trade. It's going to hurt me in the long run. And I also need to have more confidence in myself. Um, Rev B was the last trade of the day. This one was nice, but again, not full size and wide stop. So I literally got uh, barely 0.3R on this one. Um, it was gap down short, so ran up. And then we kind of gap down. Um, and I just shorted you know, pre-market with a stop over this level here, stop over, stop over this level. Um, so I was going to stop out over that level. I didn't have any areas to add into. I was hoping for a push on the market open, but we didn't get any push. Um, and so I kind of just covered out. I mean, yeah, it is what it is. Um, this plus Kala, you know, almost, almost one R, not quite. So I guess that was a little damage reduction, but yeah. Um, I also had a paper trade long. I th I don't know. I don't know if I should try longing. Or I'm tempted to because of this market, because I feel like this market's super easy to long in. But of course, I showed you guys my ASTS trade on the last recap. You guys should go check that out. That was a great long, but it was it was a uh, just well, it was a great thesis. It wasn't a great long. <laughs> But this one, very similar. Um, now this one was a paper trade because I just, I never longed before really, like listed, I've never long listed. Um, I don't know if I should try it, maybe try it with small size, but in this market, the win rate is higher and I think I wanna be patient on the exits. So here I, I, gave, it, I gave it a lot of room to work. Um, down here I spotted, okay, it's gonna trap over view op. Boom, we trap over. Now I'm gonna look for a pullback because the riggers do that a lot where they pull it back super sharp to capture shorts and then they grind it back up again. So after this sharp drop, I got in. Um, now this time I had a wider risk because I didn't wanna make the same mistake as ASTS. Um, my risk was, I think it was like, it's like 230, eh, no, it was, it was, I don't even remember to be honest. I was probably trying to do like an essay at school or something, but Again, it's a paper trade, so I probably wasn't very involved. But my thesis was right. Okay, they pushed it over high day like I thought. I took off a, th uh, a fourth here, and then they had a sharp drop here. And most failed breakouts have been continually, continually running after the failed breakout. So I decided to add in a little bit here, um, and then I noticed some weakness, so I started selling off. And then after we had this crack and the volume decline, I just saw like, okay, that was just a, that was a real failed breakout. <laughs> so I, you know, uh, got all out there. Hindsight, I should have got short, um, but they could have trapped this. You could kind of see the manipulation, perfect uh, symmetry. Uh, they just, they're soaking it up, soaking it up. So I'm surprised this one didn't run higher, to be honest. So... Now that I've gone through all my trades, I'm going to explain what I am focused on to improve or to better perform this market or at, at least stay safe. I think day ones are going to be a bit hard, okay? Now you should not be shorting if the stock is over pre-market high. I think it's, it's going to be really hard. To
to short over pre-market high. Um, if it's under, then it probably still applies to like the normal, the normal movements of a small cap gapper or whatever. But if it's over pre-market high, like things have been going 100% plus. Um, and I'll pull up AGRI. Just actually, no, I can't pull that because it has my trade on it. But yeah. So my plan is to focus more on day twos instead of day ones. Of course, I will still execute my system on day ones because I do not change my system no matter what because it's back tested to survive any uh, market. It is, it, it does go through drawdowns. It goes through at max 15 R drawdowns consecutively. That's not including like max max drawdown. That's just consecutive. Um, but yeah, so the drawdown on the system is good or is bad, <laughs> but it is profitable long term, very profitable in fact. I'm just really waiting for a bigger sample size because I've only been getting like one every other day and that's really bad because in you know 2021 or 20 yeah 2021 market, even in the slow times I was getting like two a day probably and with that sample size it was super profitable. So I don't know, I'm super confused on what I really need to change my trading right now and it's also I'm aware that it's also a bad habit of mine to automatically look for change once I seek hardship. So I'm trying to not be too quick to change. I'm kind of just, you know, tra I'm sh just going into every day like a new day. Um, and I'm trying to stick to the best opportunities, trying to spot the best opportunities. Everything is kind of unique, I feel like, in this market. Um, so I'm being careful. And yeah, I mean... We'll see how tomorrow is. I don't know. We'll just we'll see how this market goes. Um, you know, I'm feeling kind of weird in my journey right now, but I, I know I'll get through it because I'll stay alive. That's the main goal, um, and I know I'll be able to do that. But yeah, let me know if you have any comments down below. I hope you guys are doing good in this market, and if you're not doing good, I hope you're staying alive. Um, I'm on like a, well, I would say five, six, I would say I'm on like a seven R drawdown right now this week. Um, thankfully, my seven R win, uh, I think it was like Monday or Tuesday, my seven R win uh, really helped with, you know, this drawdown. So it's kind of protecting me for now. Hopefully I get another one of those system trades, that bank. Um, but yeah, I will see you guys tomorrow. Peace out.